Hi guys, uh, Sanket here. Uh, welcome to another session on protein protein interaction network. Um, in the first two sessions, if you see the previous videos, part one and part two, we saw what is protein protein interaction network. Then we saw what is graph theory. Uh, then we saw what are the uh, different um, uh, types of uh, graph theory based on the edges. Then we saw what is uh, adjacency matrix. Okay. Um, in this session, uh, what we are going to see is uh, what are the different sources of the biological of PPI biological data, okay, and what are the properties of uh, protein protein interaction network. So these are the things what we're going to see today. First uh, is your sources of um, biological data. So you have three basic sources uh, from where you can gain this PPI or protein protein interaction data. The first source is your manual curation of uh, scientific literature. Manual curation, as it suggests, is um, you have a uh, scientific literature database, for example, PubMed. Okay, you go to the scientific literature database or even there are books which are available, you go through them manually. So you annotate each and every information which is there. Uh, in that data, okay, uh, sorry, uh, each and every information which is there in the literature, manually compile them, uh, find out what are the errors in them, find out what is the redundancy in them, and then store them to form a database. So that is one way in which manual creation of scientific uh, literature is done, that, and that is one biological database. The second one is through the, um, is something what we call as the high throughput data sets. Now, uh, even before I go into what exactly is high throughput data sets for analyzing protein protein interaction, there are various experimental methods, okay, um, uh, which include yeast to hybrid, which include mass spectroscopy, there's fast display uh, method, okay. So there are various experimental methods which are there in order to analyze this PPI. Uh, so suppose you're a lab and you're doing all of these um, methods and you're generating data. What are you going to do with that data? Okay. You are going to store it in some database. Okay. So this high throughput data sets is nothing but a database which compiles the information of all these experimental methods. Okay. Data which is obtained from all of these experimental methods, they are compiled and then uh, you make a database out of them. So this is another way, uh, this is another source um, that is a high throughput data set where you can actually get the data for protein protein interaction. Okay. So, and the third one is literature text mining. So the first one is manual, second is experimental, third is I suggest text mining or data mining. Data mining or text mining is nothing but a computational technique. <clears throat> so you use computational techniques in order to mine the data. When I'm saying computational techniques, that means obviously use algorithms. You run the algorithms through the scientific literature databases. Okay. Uh, and from that, they extract the information which is useful. Okay. And this is how um, we get a a data set or a database using text mining or um, data mining techniques. Okay, so these are the three uh, sources from where we can obtain PPI or protein protein interaction data. And using this data of PPI, we can then generate a network. Okay, so in order to generate a network, you need to have some data set, right? So this is, these are the three sources from where you can actually get the data set. Okay, um, yeah, so these are the three main sources for biological data. Now, the next thing is what are the properties of PPI? And hopefully, you have understood these three things, okay, it's very basic. Now, the next thing is what are the properties of PPI or protein protein interaction? The three uh, basic properties for PPI, okay, the first one being your small world effect. Now, if you see this network. I hope you can see the cursor. If you see the network, there are three networks within this entire thing. So you have this one, you have two, and you have three. So I said three networks which are connected to each other. Let me give it another term. There are three clusters in this network. So this is one cluster, this is another cluster, and this is third cluster. Now, um, 
what you see here these are these round shaped structures are nothing but your nodes i think you have learned in the graph theory but still i'll repeat it your ground shaped st structures or your entities are nothing but the nodes these nodes can be your proteins they can be uh, your genes and the lines which are connecting them are called as uh, edges um, also let me i think if you remember this is a undirected uh, graph this is an undirected network edge graph because you cannot see any direction you cannot see any flow and that's why it's an undirected graph so what this uh, network shows you that this network has a great connectivity so all of them are very tightly condensed or tightly uh, interconnected with each other so there's a great network which you can see between these nodes consider these nodes to be proteins okay and there is a good connection between them now what does your small world effect suggest that if i want to go from suppose this network to this network okay so this network may one of the node is a in this network the another node is b if i want to go from this network walk all the way and move to this network how many steps i have to take okay how much least i have to walk in order to go to that steps okay so this is what we call as the shortest path or the shortest distance so how short should be the distance between the two uh, networks so if this is a network and this is a network what is the shortest distance between the two uh, networks is what we call as the shortest path and what we understand in the small world effect is so what should be the small so that path should be six steps okay so if you read here if we are comparing two nodes which are there between two different networks the distance between the two networks should be six steps or less than six steps so if you count this this is one two three four five so this is five or which is less than six steps okay it's also called as a six degree of separation okay so if i am considering a small world effect so in your small world effect there are two important things which is there a uh, this is called as the shortest path so we have to find what is the shortest path and how short should be it should be six nodes less than six steps so if any dam network which you consider if both the networks are joined to each other okay by six by a difference of like six nodes or less than six steps then we consider that uh, this entire network as a high as a great connected network okay i'll repeat again if we have two networks and both these networks you can walk through one network to another network in six steps or less than that so one two Three, four, five. So, if you can walk through one network to another network in less than six steps, then we say that both these networks are very good and highly connected to each other. Okay. Like, for example, if you're traveling from place A to place B, you can go from that place A to place uh, place B in less than probably, let's say, uh, which are very far away from each other, but you in le less uh, less than like fifteen minutes or twenty minutes. Very fast if you can go then we say that both these places are very good okay highly connected to each other it's the same thing here okay how fast you move that way it's connected so this is one of the property what we call as your small world effect all right hopefully you have understood this one okay uh, the next effect is your scale free network okay now what exactly is scale free network tell me what you feel this is I think you already know. So you have Insta, you have um, WhatsApp, you have an Oculus, which is the VR, and third one is Live Rail. Live Rail is not there that much in India, but these four were independent companies. Okay. Um, but what happened was in the course of time, due to losses or um, uh, due to some other issues, this company was um, not performing well. And when your comp company does not really perform well, no? so what you do generally is you go towards a company which is really, really good, okay, or which is performing fantastically well, 
all right and that means in this case basically uh, you sell your company to a big shot so that you earn billions of dollars in this case for all the four it was fb facebook so facebook bought all these four companies all right uh, their owners the respective owners who actually started with them made uh, millions and billions of dollars okay but now you know fb is doing wonderful with them so this is one example where you have one big company one major company okay uh, buying all four companies or four basic small small companies going towards one major company i'll give you another example of google i don't know if you can see the arrows but android and youtube were actually independent companies okay just because they were not performing well or because they are performing well google actually bought them or they went towards google whatsoever okay um, so what has actually happened in this case is there are some few companies okay um, they saw some bigger leader they saw someone with great connection okay and they felt that i we should be attached to this huge company now these huge companies are let us give them a very good word let us call them as hubs okay so fb and google are right now hubs and they are actually connecting small 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 companies they have small small companies integrated within themselves or connected to themselves so if we consider this to be a network and this to be a network so this is a hub and this is a hub so this hub has four nodes we can say which is connected to them and this hub has these many nodes which are connected to them now try and understand the reason why these nodes went towards this hub okay was because this is what we call as preferential attachment okay preferential attachment is because these nodes wanted to be they preferred that they should be getting attached to this specific hub protein what is there all right now i threw two terms in front of you i threw a thing something called as hub and something called as preferential attachment okay and finally what happened from all of this was already fb and google itself was getting very much richer because all of these guys joined fb and all of these people joined google they were already rich they become richer okay you understood this example now let's understand this example from our network point of view so we have these networks so there are these various so this is one network this is another network this is the third network they are all interconnected to each other this was the previous network on which i showed now because this network you see these node this node this node this node has a good connectivity here this node has a very good connectivity here this node has a very good connectivity here okay uh so we can call this as good connectivity or i'll throw another term is called as degree hopefully if you remember we learned what was degree in the graph theory wala example okay remember uh, that 5 3 3 3 1 2 1 how a degree is calculated even in your, in your adjacency matrix how it is calculated so because this hub is connected to so many so it has a good degree this is connected to so many of them so it has a good degree this is connected to so many so it has a good degree so consider these nodes or as to be your hub nodes okay so in actually in your um, previous example what we saw so consider this to be your facebook or google okay or apple all right which are the hub companies which have so many different companies attached with them so these are your hubs now hopefully you understood what a hub is so they the hubs are the ones that provide a high connectivity between the network okay and what these hub, hubs do is they connect all the small number of networks and adjoining networks between them so what happens is when i'm saying when all these small networks and adjoining networks are connecting to the hub that means it is what we call as your preferential attachment one you remember in the first case i in the previous one that fb and google i threw a term called as preferential attachment so it's the same case it's here so all your nodes are preferentially getting attached to the hubs why because it's the big boss everybody wants to be with the big boss okay so uh, 
you understand what I mean? Okay, so everyone wants to be a part of this big company. So this is what we call as preferential attachment. And finally, what happens is, okay, the rich gets richer. So what we see in the real uh, companies, how they do in the market and all, it's exactly happening the same thing in our protein protein interaction network okay you have these hub proteins which uh, connect all the different proteins with each other so that's why these which are in orange they are called as hubs because all of them are connected to it okay uh, then they have the preferential attachment so because all of these are um, uh, yeah so because all of these small entities are connected to it so that's why it's called as a preferential attachment they prefer being attached to this model so if i give you another example if you have three important fields we have biotechnology bioinformatics and biomedical engineering and you three and you all students are a part of that so suppose this is biotechnology all of you students are connected to this so your biotechnology becomes the hub so probably the teacher in charge of biotechnology becomes in becomes a hub and all of you students which are the nodes are preferentially attached to this biotechnology same with bioinformatics your teacher in charge is your bioinformatics hub and all the students are connected to that bioinformatics teacher same with your biomedical engineer so now you understood what a hub protein is the hub is the main person it connects all the different proteins which is and uh, the, it, it's what we call as rich get richer because sub logo they, they come towards the main thing so that hub starts becoming greater and greater and greater yeah that is also one more thing the more number of connectivity which happens with the hub proteins the greater the size it becomes so if you want to let's say just randomly i'm throwing it you see three orange uh, nodes here and you see if i'm saying google am uh, google apple and uh, facebook so we, we probably think that google has a bigger circle because it's a big hub so many things are connected to it so that's why its circle size would be bigger then probably it would be apple and then after that would be fb okay so the reason i'm telling giving you this example is just so that you can understand okay so hopefully you understood so um, these are the two things so this one is a scale free network our third property of ppin Oh, sorry one more thing is edges are preferentially attached to nodes with, with the highest degree so that is what i was saying that one which has the highest degree degree i think you understood what i'm saying here the one with has the highest degree okay the most number of connections everybody any node would like to be attached to it okay so that is how a network is made by the way uh this is how network is made up huh? When I'm saying properties, so when the nodes are there, they always go towards those hubs which has the highest cluster. That's how a network is generated. Okay. The third one is your transitivity. Now, transitivity means your cluster. So again, we look at the same network here. You see this, you see this, and you see this. These are our clusters. So this is one transitivity, this is also transitivity, and this is also transitivity. So this is a cluster or a community. So this is one community, second community, third community. Okay. So transitivity means clusters, interconnected clusters or interconnected communities. If you have a high transitivity, that means it is very, very dense. In this case, probably <clears throat> it is not that dense. So we will say that um, it, it's not such high. Uh, transit if you have uh, hundreds and hundreds of protein protein interactions with each other and you have a huge hub protein then we can say that that one cluster has a high transitivity there okay uh, and what you can understand by un, uh, by transitivity basically is to understand how the different uh, proteins are interacting with each other and which is your hub protein and what are the other different proteins that are interacting with those hub proteins? Okay, basically interaction समझ में आते हैं यहाँ पे कि तुम्हारा hub protein कौन सा है और कौन-कौन से proteins जो है वो directly उसके साथ connected हैं और क्योंकि वो cluster है cluster का मतलब सबसे पास में है उसके बाद फिर आजू-बाजू रहेंगे the cluster are the ones like you have your best friends and you have your friends so the best friends are the ones who are very much close to you and after that you have one more layer of the friends which are there so this helps us to understand so if your best friends and you that forming a group together i can say that is a transitivity okay that is one cluster understanding your cluster i'll get to know how you actually make friends who are your best ones okay that way so uh, it's the same thing in this case so a cluster will make you understand <clears throat> 
विच आर द प्रोटीन्स विच आर वेरी नाइसली एंड क्लोजली रिलेटेड टू इच अदर एंड इसमें और एक पता चल जाता है इज योर ड्रग टारगेट प्रोटीन सो हम जब प्रोटीन ड्रग इंट्रैक्शन की बात करते हैं तब कौन सा प्रोटीन है जिसको टारगेट करना चाहिए फॉर योर ड्रग्स ओके फॉर लाइक हम कहते हैं योर ड्रग गोज एंड बाइंड्स टू द प्रोटीन तो वो कौन सा टारगेट प्रोटीन होना चाहिए दैट आल्सो यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड बाय इफ यू डू दिस ट्रांसिटिविटी एनालिसिस ओके सो दीज आर द थ्री प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ योर पीपीआईएन ओके आई जस्ट क्विकली शो यू व्हाट देयर सॉरी so one is your small world effect then you have scale free network okay and third is your transitivity all right uh, in the next session we will look at um, what exactly are the topological ppin okay so what are the topological properties of protein protein interaction okay is what we are going to study hopefully you understood these uh, three major properties of protein protein interaction network okay um uh, yeah so meet you in the next session bye bye take care